All right, one more time. Tom, you got this, okay? okay. Melbourne, turn 14. Which gear do you enter? I enter in gear one. No, it's gear six. Baku Castle, which gear? Uh, gear eight. It's gear three. Oh. Damn it, Tom, what's the matter? You need to know these things if you want to be able to compete. It's just really hard because, you know, it's not sticking in my head it, and the tires don't stick on the track and it's, it's just really difficult. Yeah, I guess so. You know what? I know a guy. I guess he might help you. I'm gonna call him. I'll call him now. Scott? Yes, it's me. We need your help, man. Okay, well, while we get the super teacher here, um, let, let's start the show. I'm sorry. Welcome everyone to the anniversary of Nitro Nights. Yes, it is the 20th episode and so glad to have you all with us because on this show we'll have the grand final of Lamborghinis, the real race. We'll also have the news flash and we'll be showing Jardier's legs in the social showroom. Plus, as always, we'll have a very exciting guest join us. This guest today is going to turn your world upside down. How is he going to manage that? Well, we'll soon find out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Scott Mansell, a.k.a. Driver 61. Scott Mansell, or Driver 61 as you may know him, is a British racing driver. His career goes all the way back to 1996. In 2004, he broke multiple lap records at Silverstone, Donington Park, Lausitzring, and Solder. In 2015, he ventured into the world of YouTube. On his main channel, he discusses real-life racing events such as F1, presents vlogs, and recaps some of his own races. His passion for sim racing drove him to create another YouTube channel. On it, Driver61 mainly focuses on iRacing and provides useful advice for his audience. While most of his videos revolve around gaining speed, Mansell sometimes goes a little wild and tries to drive cars upside down, for example. Only a real racer would think of that. Speaking of being a real racer, Driver61 also helps others to become the same. In his driver training programs, he details the ins and outs of racing a car. But sim racers don't need to feel left out, because he also offers coaching sessions for iRacing. So there you have it then, Mr. Scott Mansell, aka Driver61, joining us on Nitro Night. Scott, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Tom. Great to be here today. Yeah, well, listen, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. I've got a sense of the world of Scott Mansell, a.k.a. Driver 61 there, you know, driving upside down. It's incredible to watch your videos. A lot of eyes watch all of the content you put out there. And I want to know, what is the secret, Scott? <laughs> well, Tom, there's, there's, there's not one secret. Um, it's easy to say, you know, that there's, there's a lot of hard work involved, which there is. We've got a team of guys um, helping me with, with those videos. But... Um, We've kind of, we started Driver 61 and it was purely focused on racing drivers, like technical advice, understanding the racing line, weight transfer, how to trail break, things like that, which is the core of our business. However, um, during this year, we've kind of gone a little bit more broad uh, with our content on YouTube. And with that, we're actually getting many more views now. But I always try to focus the YouTube content on what I find interesting. So driving technique, analyzing really fast racing drivers, and kind of the, the really interesting engineering um, around motorsport and the innovators around motorsport. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating because if you're not passionate about it, people will pick up on that and they'll see right through it. So that's why I, I thoroughly enjoy your videos, Scott. Um, what would you say you've brought? Because obviously, from the real life racing world, what, what do you think you've brought with you to the sim racing world? Um, well, I mean, in terms of like driving a car, and that, that's what I do. I'm an ex-professional racing driver, but primarily now I, I'm a coach. And we've got a team of coaches here, both in the real world and in the sim uh, world. And I think what we bring is we allow people to enjoy their racing, their hobby, their passion more because they really understand the cars that they're driving. They're able to push them to the limit and ultimately become faster real world and sim racers. Okay. All right. Because I've looked at the program uh, and, and it's, a, it's a wide range of stuff that you're able to, to bring out of drivers. Uh, what would you think is the hardest lecture to teach or, or the particular practical thing that, that is hard to pass on to, to your students? Uh, 
I mean, all of the technique is is quite difficult, to be honest with you. Driving a car in the sim is is a complex thing. There's many things happening. You're you know you're trying to push yourself all all the time. You're trying to consciously think about how the car is behaving, and so it really depends on the driver. But if there's one thing, one tip that would really benefit most drivers, it's really focusing on your vision. If you're not looking in the right areas on on the track at the right time, then you're kind of really narrowing your perspective of the racetrack and everything else then becomes very difficult. Okay, so keeping that focus, something I struggle with. Uh, uh, Scott, all right then. And I know this sounds like a, a, an odd question, but what really makes a racer? Like what, what, what would you say was that one thing that defines the racer? I think it's the kind of constant need to try and push things a little bit further to like create new limits to to really look in the details and see where you can find time constantly looking like that as with many other sports uh, really means that you will find the pace okay uh, so finding that pace it also says and i'm intrigued by this that you give a driver score so i'm curious how do you go about giving someone a score what are the parameters how do you even begin that Oh, so on the website, we have uh, the driver's scorecard, um, which looks at the five principles of driving. So pure pace, consistency, um, understanding setup, overtaking, and, and, and a few other things. And we ask various questions of, of the drivers or whoever's taking um, the, the scorecard, and we, we wait the, the answers to those questions. And then at the end, uh, you get like a 15-page PDF report that explains the areas where you can improve and how to do that. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so that's how we, we come to the, uh, the, the the kind of result in the scorecard. Okay. Do people ever challenge the score? No, I don't think so. We get so we. I mean, we get we get some questions about them uh, through our email, of course. But mainly, uh, people then try to, you know, obviously go and improve in those areas. Okay, and that's probably the main reason why you do it. Um, listen, Scott, I mentioned earlier about the F1 car on the ceiling. You're you're able to deal with tricky situations, but do you think you'll be able to deal with the quick fire round? <sighs> I hope so. Okay, all Let's right see. Well, then. We will start if you feel like you're ready, because it wasn't very confident, but I'll take it. Here we go okay. then. Favorite racing game? Uh, I racing. Favorite driver? Leclerc. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Favorite car? Um, 1997 Benetton F1 car. Oh, very good. Good choice, that one. Uh, personal Quite hero niche. of esports racing? Oh, that's a tricky one. It is. Uh, I'm going to say James Baldwin because he's got the real world stuff as well. And I like that transition. Okay. Well, stay tuned with that because I'll be asking you a question about him in a second. Uh, the most important thing to learn for driving? Uh, good vision. Good vision. Uh, and finally, the most evil turn or track part that you know? Evil turn? Oh, I mean, awkward and horrible. The chicane at Abu Dhabi. Um, it's just really awkward, horrible corner. Uh. There you go, Scott. Well done on the quick fire round questions. Not too tricky. Stick around. I'll have some less tricky questions for you. In the meantime, talking of tricky situations, the grand final of Lamborghini's The Real Race went down. And here's what happened. Lamborghini's The Real Race entered its final round last Thursday. Twelve drivers who qualified in five online events raced it out at the grand final, which was broadcast from Lamborghini's headquarters in Italy. Two races took place in Assetto Corsa Competizione. First, Barcelona was the stage for a 30-minute battle in treacherous weather conditions. Arno Lecom was the unluckiest driver on the whole grid. Starting from pole position, he made a bad mistake after seven minutes, underestimating the effect of rain on his grip. He managed to save his car from the worst, but nonetheless sustained some damage and slipped down to P11 over the rest of the race. In contrast, Red Bull's Niels Naujoks had a flawless run and finished first in front of Kamil Pavlovsky and Jordan Sherratt. Before the second and final race started, everyone got to see a show battle between F1 veteran David Coulthard and motorcycle racer Peko Banyaya. While it was a tough race at the start, Banyaya soon got the upper hand. Coulthard gave his opponent a digital fist bump at the end, taking the defeat well. I think that was an education on how to drive a race car. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Mount Panorama was the scene of the final race. Sunny weather didn't make this course any easier, as Samir Ebrahimi showed with his spin in turn one. 
A few minutes later, hard contact between Pejic and De Salvo led to a massive time loss for them, ending with both forfeiting the competition. Connection issues meant Kamil Pavlovsky had to retire as well. Arno Lecom led the race, battling hard with Niels Naudjoks. He suddenly then misjudged the distance between them and crashed into a wall, handing victory over to Naudjoks. So Naudjoks saw victory that day, followed by Matthias Egger and Jordan Sherratt. On top of their trophies, they won a three-day VIP experience at the Lamborghini HQ, where they'll test future car models in a research and development simulator. There you have it, the grand final of the Lamborghinis, the real race. Um, brilliant studio, though, I have to say. Almost as good as the Nitro Night studio, where I am joined by Scott Mansell. Scott, um, epic racing that was going down there in that competition. However, I'm curious to know, um, you mentioned him earlier, James Baldwin, the likes of Rudy Van Buren, even Enzo Benito are, are from the sim racing world who've gone into real life racing and have won. Do, do you expect to see more of that, uh, say, from something like the real race? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something where we actually pay quite a lot of attention because we we, we transition the real world and, and sim racing. And, you know, over the next years, it's something that we're going to see more and more um, often. I, I see, you know, the kids that are coming through karting and then into single seaters in the real world, they're using sims so much to supplement their training. And, uh, and you know, it goes hand in hand. The majority of the technique that you need in the real world is the same in the sim. Of course, there's a few little tweaks that you might take in the sim, but um, but it's very, very similar. Do, do you think they have a particular mindset that that helps, say if we use James Baldwin as the example, it, does he have a mindset or something different that sets him apart that, that therefore he can tr transition to the real races? Yes, um, James is very good. So I've, I've worked with James um, and, and known reasonably well. He has very good adaptability. He can feel and understand what the car's doing and then manipulate and change his technique. And that's what makes him fast in the sim. Like he gets up to speed very quickly. Um, and that's what works particularly well in the real world where you have much less track time compared to the sim. So he can get up to speed. I think, you know, he, he almost put it on pole even in his first race, which was just incredible. Yeah, I'm sure Jensen Button is enjoying having him on his team at the moment. Um, staying on that sort of uh, topic of mindset, what would be the main difference for people who are trying to beat a lap time or, or set a good qualifying time where they're on their own on the track, comparing that to when you've got all the other competitors around you? How do you change that mindset? Um, you know, I think the mindset's pretty similar. There's just more things that are going on when you're, when you're racing with another 30 cars on the track. And this is something that's particularly difficult in the sim, actually, because you don't have quite the, the the definition or the detail in understanding where the cars are around you. And so it's why I think in sim racing, sometimes we can be a, see a bit more contact than we might do in, in the real world. But ultimately, the, 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 the mindset should be the same. You're always attacking. You're always pushing. You're always trying to push the boundaries as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, talking of like when I'm hosting F1 Esports, all cars are set to equal. Does, does that affect uh, how a driver would approach the situation? Um, I don't think so. You're always trying to get the most out of the car. And it doesn't matter if the cars are different or the same. As a racing driver, you're trying to get the most from that car. For me, racing, the most, the, the most fun of it is the fact that you extract the best lap time that you can from the car. And on top of that, the wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing is also a lot of fun. So you're always just pushing these boundaries. Okay, pushing boundaries. Um, talking of boundaries being pushed, I can see more manufacturers setting up their own esports competitions. Do you kind of agree? Can you see that happening? I Yeah, I mean, yes, of course, that's going to happen. I think especially over the last six months, that's happened um, a lot more. And I think it's going to get ev even more popular. And it's only, you know, it can only really be a good thing. There's more exposure for sim racing, more drivers with more prizes and, and some of them transitioning into the real world if they want to do that. So, I mean, I think it's all brilliant. Yeah. Um, could there ever be a Scott Mansell Driver 61 competition? We, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> The we excitement, been, um, the sheer excitement yeah, there the of that question, Scott. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, 
there could be potential and we really focus on our training programs at the moment you know we run these four four week training programs with live tuition as well so we're focusing on that at the moment but i wouldn't you know it could be a possibility uh, in the future okay well watch this space uh, something that we ask everyone who watches nitro nights to to get involved in is the social showrooms and interestingly enough we posed the question uh, what driving game needed a sequel or what platform needed a sequel uh, this is the response uh, that we got and we put this out there and we said what's a racing game you absolutely want to see a sequel of um, and I kind of ask you Scott is there something that you would like to see a sequel of um you know as, as I mentioned before I I like extracting the most from a racing car and I like the wheel to wheel racing and so for me I enjoy iRacing um, I think with the way that they uh, control the, the race, the, the overtaking and the contact there, I think it actually puts you in the right frame of mind that you would typically have in the real world where you're taking a little bit more care with your overtaking maneuvers. Um, so, I, you know, they're updating iRacing all the time. But if there were to be a sequel, then yeah, of course. Okay, and it was your favorite uh, game as well, so uh, so there you go. Uh, okay, uh, the Jardier has been on this show before. He's fantastic, currently taking part uh, in the V10 League. Uh, <laughs> he posted this, uh, my legs after two-hour community race with a new load cell settings, as you can see, before and after. Uh, have you noticed results like that, Scott, uh, whilst uh, sim racing? Yeah, and actually, I've got those same pants that he's got. They're red. <laughs> they look like they're velvet. I mean, <laughs> uh, but yeah, do, do do you notice it? Is that something that people have to? We talk about training, but you have to get used to being in something. You know, in a position for such a long time. You're not getting the g forces, but you you do have to kind of like mind over matter. You're gonna have to concentrate for a long period of time. Yeah, of course. Being sat in that position for you know a number of hours is is always difficult. And if you've if you've got if you're lucky enough to have some load cell pedals, then it you know it can put a lot of strain on your uh, on your left foot. Mm. Um, now, uh, obviously, we watched you with your F1 car on the ceiling. Uh, Freddie Rasmussen um, noticed this, uh, which didn't look too healthy uh, as a situation. Uh, he <laughs> talks about it being a dangerous location. I don't know what's going on, but. Uh, yeah, I hope he's all right, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the best to whoever that is. I mean, that's, uh, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, maybe there's like a little rope ladder or something for them to get down. Uh, and finally, uh, talking of uh, liveries uh, on this show, which we will do in a second, this has come about. Uh, we had a blast talking to Fox uh, about animating in the library paint editor, joining PTG Forza and how he started out uh, with all of the liveries, um, amazing work that's done. Um, there's just so many. Are, are you a particular fan of one in particular, Scott? Um, I mean, I I really like the kind of old school F1 liveries, the retro stuff from from the 70s. I I, I love that kind of style, and um, of course, it's brilliant in sim racing where you can put your own liveries on whatever car that you want to. Yeah, make sure, uh, guys, you go and check out uh, that article on Overtake GG. Uh, now, I have been told, Scott, that you are moving uh, at the moment. So you couldn't take part in Trackmania. Apparently, you didn't want to lose to my incredible lightning time. So do you know what? Why don't we have this instead? You like liveries. So let's have a livery quiz. Okay, Scott, no pressure on this. This has never been done on Nitro Nights. This is the livery quiz. And what will happen? You will see a picture of a livery. I want to know the team and the year in which it was on that vehicle. So uh, does that make sense? You'll get a point if you get both of those correct. Makes sense. Okay, I'm there. perfect. Uh, well, best of luck. I'm very competitive and I am definitely hoping to get one point at least. So you're first of three. Here you go, Scott. 2009 Braun. Okay, I see what's happening here. Easy, that was, come that on. That was easy, that was easy. Why does, that doesn't make any sense. Why does Scott get the easy ones? <laughs> Unbelievable. It's a beautiful gonna, car, that though, isn't it? Uh, and, and a surprise that Braun won it back in 2009. <laughs> you look through the years, Ferrari, Red Bull, McLaren, Braun. Okay, fine, Renault, <laughs> Williams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, it's my turn, here we go. My livery to look at. Oh, come on. That's some old school Ferrari action. So Ferrari, I think maybe 1973. Uh, I think I know what that is. Oh, come on. 
1979 Ferrari. Okay, fair enough. One nil to Scott at the moment. Scott, back to you. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, God, that's a hard one. Uh, it's a Lotus. Uh, so I'm going to go 68. No, that's no, it's later than that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's that's what I said. So technically, just in case, that is, I said it, I didn't say it aloud, but that was in my head. So I'm just going to give myself a point for that one. Uh, I'm up next, Scott. <laughs> oh, uh, this is the McLaren. Come on. Oh, I feel like it's a 70. No, 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 no. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, McLaren 83. Oh, come on. Come on, Tom. Oh, my word. That's annoying. That is annoying. And I did. That's embarrassing, up. mate. That, that one's embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Still, still only 1 0, so that's fine. All right, then, Scott. Best of luck. Get this one. You've won. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. Uh, 2014 Red Bull. Is that the last car for Vettel? Oh, 2010. No, no, it's no. his favorite one. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Yes, we're still in this. Uh, I will take my livery, please. Nitro Knights team. Be friendly to me. Oh, okay. Uh, that is the... Why, I, oh, that is a Williams, I think. And I'm going to say uh, 19... 90, oh, no. I'm out again in my head. 2001. 2004. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Do you know what? That is actually a really, really fun quiz. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that, Scott? A.K.A. Scott? There? That was a lot of fun. It was, it was actually a bit harder than I expected. Mm. Um, I think I was quite lucky there having the brawn. Yeah, uh, yeah. But listen, hey, uh, well deserved. Driver 61. Uh, that is all the time we have uh, to catch up with you, Scott. But um, is there any homework you would like to leave with us? Yeah, if you're looking to get quicker um, in the sim or in the real world, uh, check out drive61.com. We've got loads of online tutorials there to help you get faster and really master uh, sim racing. So check it out and uh, work through all of our free videos online. Oh, amazing stuff. Listen, Scott Mansell, it's so great to have you on the show today. Did you enjoy yourself? It's fantastic, Tom. Thank you. Okay, well, best of luck with the move. Uh, we will say goodbye to you, Scott, and hopefully catch up with you soon on Nitro Nights. Well, there you go. And um, listen, coming your way right now is more action in the sim racing as we bring you the news flash. Okay then, let's start the news flash as we mean to go on with plenty of drama. We have competition starting and some are really hotting up towards the end. Let's kick start then with round nine of Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. It's the second time they took to Le Mans this season as the first race ended in controversy and was overturned later. Sebastian Job had the opportunity to win it all with a win in the main race as he was 84 points ahead of his rival drivers and in particular, Joshua Rogers. Qualifying left Job in sixth and Rogers in eighth. Paul went to Mitchell de Jong, who also won the sprint race. The two guys at the top of the table got it together during the end of the sprint race. Rogers finished P2 and Job at P4. This just narrowly closed the points gap. So those are the positions they'd start for the main race. Rogers now very much had the advantage. The race, though, was a masterclass in defending by Rogers, who fended off attacks from the advancing Job even in the final lap. It finished Rogers, Job, and then De Jong. So where does that leave us now? Now, well, Job has a 71-point leave over Rogers at the top. However, it's too early for him to start celebrating yet. A mid-pack finish will be enough in the final round of Monza. Will he screw it up? Who knows? But Rogers doesn't seem to be going down without a fight. Next up, let's take a look at the iRacing Rallycross World Championship 2020. It kicked off with a banger of an event at the newly implanted Norwegian circuit Lankenbanen. Previous year's runner-up, Mitchell de Jong, is looking to build on his success earlier this year when he won the Subaru All-Star Invitational. He and Bobby Zelensky signed for the Subaru team ahead of the competition. A lot of trust has been put in the young American who delivered on it massively. De Jong won the first heat race by using the track to his advantage and applying his experience to get ahead in the opening lap. 
Oh, by the way, drivers have a joker lap, which allows drivers to take shortcuts. De Jong's perfect day, however, was ruined by Ilari Lamensivu. Lamensivu is a Finnish newcomer to Rallycross scene who drove an immaculate main race. De Jong was second, but uh, almost a second behind. Due to the strong performance of De Jong in qualifying and his heat race, he stands top of the table after round one. And finally, E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series Round 15, Las Vegas. The penultimate round of the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series saw many drivers trying to clinch the last possible points of the season. The race itself saw many drivers getting real close, like, like real close, closer than close. Most of the race remained peaceful until a big shunt at lap 95 mixed up the field and I led to, it led to a caution. Um, and I quote the commentator, Evan Pasoko, they're smoking, it's a huge wreck. Anyway, uh, after a chaotic action in the mid part of the race, Jimmy Mullis was the one who took the victory. For him, it is the second win of the season. Um, this was crucial for him to win because it puts him in range for a shot at the playoff spots. Don't forget, one to eight make the playoffs. Mullis is now 15 points away from Alfala. Next round will be the last race of the regular season and therefore is the final opportunity to have a chance at the gigantic prize money of $200,000. What would I do with $200,000, eh? Mm. Well, actually, what would you do? Let me know in the comments. That is it for this week's Nitro Nights News Flash. Completed that, completed that, completed that. Guys, we've come to the end of the show. We've done everything. Thank you very much for joining us for the Nitro Nights 20th episode anniversary. Really was a pleasure to have you with us. We'll be back in seven days time. We'll see you then. In the meantime, stay safe and don't forget to buckle up.